round of applause for my people there. <laughs> Hello, can you guys hear me at the back? Great. It's absolutely brilliant to be here. It's an amazing event. And I'm going to start by saying I think it's really important that we come together on occasions like this and celebrate ourselves and look to the future and about what we can achieve. So I'm just going to tell you a little story about my journey because bottom line is we need more doctors in Parliament. So I'm hoping that what I tell you today might inspire you to do exactly the same thing and put yourself forward and let your voice be heard. So I basically was born and raised in Tooting and I came from um, a mixed race family which at the time was, was quite unusual. My dad's Pakistan, my mum's Polish. And uh, my mum was a single mum, and she worked three jobs to put food on the table. And I really, really wanted to go to medical school. But I was told, well, people like you, doesn't, don't, they don't really get into medical school. It doesn't really happen. So right from the outset, I kind of had a really good understanding of what it was like to feel as though opportunities that might be open to others were not available to me. So as a result, I went to study a degree I wasn't even interested in, because I didn't actually believe that I could afford to go to medical school or make it through medical school, let alone make it in medical school. But while there, the NHS reform plan, sorry, a bit of boring, boring politics, um, came into the fore and it, there was funding available for people from backgrounds like mine to go and study medicine through more grants and bursaries, etc. So I went on to study medicine, but that sense of actually I was so incredibly lucky to be where I was, studying what I was, and I wanted to help other people go forward, fueled my interest in politics in the first place. But you know, what happens? You graduate, you get on this roller coaster of F1, F2, specialist training, and you're made to feel that there is no other path other than just carrying on. And when you go and speak to your supervisor about maybe having an UP, they say, oh, now's not a good time. And in fact, there's never ever a good time according to them because they just want you to carry on training so you can finish at the end and plug the road up. But I had a deep interest in, in humanitarian medicine and um, I'm telling you this because it's the alternative career and wellness uh, sort of conference. So this, this may interest you as well that I decided to devote my life to working in the field of humanitarian medicine. And I actually have taken it about four years out in total to work with the Red Cross um, in, in war zones and did a master's in public health specialising in emergency humanitarian assistance. And I spent a lot of time in the field. Through that, I mean, you guys know what it's like. We see the depths of despair every day in our work in the NHS. We see true pain, and we work towards making an inevitable journey for many people that bit better. When you work in the humanitarian sector, you realize that there are, there are people with the same needs, but they just don't have the resources. So doing that, I realized that I wanted my role to be being a voice that have none. For, for, sorry, being a voice for those that don't have a voice. Something that you guys do every single day, whether you realise it or not. So I came back and I decided to become a local councillor. So I'm at a Labour Party, I thought, well, I'm going to become a local councillor. And in fact, I was able to do loads of good in that role. And then the seat became available. Sadiq Khan won the London Mayor and it was absolutely brilliant. We were all super proud of him. And I thought to myself, hold on a minute, I'm a normal person, by and large. I work hard in our public sector. I am a mum of two little girls. Being an MP is probably an impossibility. But actually, don't we need more people like us? Don't we need more people <coughs> who fight the fight every day on our NHS front line, taking that fight to the government? So I thought, Do you know what, I'm, I'm going to give it a go. And there are all sorts of conspiracy theories from the, from the opposition, you know, oh, oh, a doctor's been shoehorned into the position because of the junior doctor's fight. Oh, she's been hand-selected because of the junior doctor's fight. Oh, she's been picked because she works in the local hospital, which is the biggest employer, therefore they think she's going to get votes. No, actually, as doctors, we work bloody hard. We know what it's like to work day and night for our patients. Why can't we work day and night for the population as a whole, regardless of whether they're ill or not? Why can't we do that? So essentially, for me, it wasn't about Labour versus Conservative versus Lib Dem. There were good people in every single party. It was about saying, what can I do to serve the community further? So I stood and I won. And that was really good and very exciting. And since being in there, though, 
I've seen that our message of fighting cuts to nurse bursaries, of target-driven NHS provision, of the crisis in social care, the crisis in mental health, just constantly feeling like we have people standing on top of our heads telling us how to do our jobs, but not giving us the time to do it. These are all the issues that are really, really important to stand up for. So I've not been in there long. I'm not standing before you today saying, yeah, I'm like this expert politician, yeah, goodbye NHS, I'm here, love my life. I'm just a normal person, just like you, who's had enough of what the government's doing and say, well, do you know what? If you're going to complain about the government, go and become the government. Try and do something about it from the inside. So that's my humble story. I will say that as doctors, the thing we don't do enough of is we don't take care of ourselves enough. I know Rishi said it before, like, morale is at an all-time low. I see that now, not just through my colleagues, because I was a junior doctor myself until just three months ago, um, but also just all together, we just don't look after ourselves. Like, you know, nurses are very good at taking breaks and covering each other. We're not very good at asking for breaks in the workplace because we might think it makes us look weak, or we think our boss won't think that we're good enough at our job and won't sign us off for our ARCP and all the tick boxes that we've got to do. But ultimately, we need to look after ourselves, we need to look after each other, but it's an absolute honour to be here today, and I've got some prizes to, uh, to give out. So I'm not going to talk at you anymore, but I just want you all to give yourselves a massive round of applause, because you work bloody hard, and it's really, really great to celebrate everything that you do. So, big round of applause for yourself. <laughs> the moment we've all been waiting for, the ACW Awards. So we'd like to do this um, this year because these skills are rarely ever recognised amongst the medical profession. Um, our academia is usually recognised, but not the kind of soft skills or the diversified skills and the transferable skills that we use every day within medicine and outside medicine. So I wanted to showcase the medics that have stepped outside that box and uh, are doing really amazing things. So I first want to um, bring up the Diversified Medics. Who are you, the finalists? Please come up to the stage. Kishan, you are wonderful. Yes, Kishan. Yes. Quickly, quickly, please. <laughs> Thank you. So can I, can I all ask you to quickly, 10 seconds, introduce yourselves and what you do. Yeah. Hello, I'm Kishan Rees, um, junior doctor, clinical teaching fellow, and cause a little bit of disruption on social media, but it's all for a good cause. Um, hi there, my name is Emma Tane, I'm a GP. I work as a locum, but I'm also a blogger and makeup artist, and I've just gotten into photography as well. Hi, I'm Zeeshan, I'm a swimsuit model. <laughs> Hi, my name is uh, Zishan, I'm a paediatric junior doctor and I uh, help um, produce um, student and junior doctor led uh, charity driven medical education resources. Hi, I'm Zoe Norris, uh, I'm a GP, an appraiser, a CCG lead, um, a blogger, um, part of the GPC and I lecture for Hot Topic. Hi everyone, I'm Gary Smith, I'm a GP and a homeopathic doctor from Belfast working with the Faculty of Homeopathy, working in complementary medicine and active in social media and special thanks to a fantastic day to allow thinking outside the box. Thanks everyone.
showing and support these amazing exceptional people. So, <laughs> Great, well, firstly, I think you will agree that absolutely everybody on this stage sounds incredibly impressive, and we're all really proud of the work that they're doing. But on this occasion, the winner I'm happy to announce is Kishan Rees. So I'm Kartik Moda, or Tika as some of you might know me as. Uh, I'm a North London GP, really passionate about digital healthcare and how we connect actually online as medics as well. So uh, I'm the co-founder of My Health Specialist, a platform which helps people find specialists that have been recommended by doctors, which is in one of the other categories, and also Tico's GP group, which is one of the largest social media groups for GPs on Facebook. Hey, my name's Gaurav. Um, I'm an SPR in forensic psychiatry, and I founded, or co-founded, Mappen, which provides hospital-specific guidelines and medical calculators for um, for doctors. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> my name's Fred. I'm Zeeshan's twin brother. <laughs> Hi, my name's Ollie. I'm a final year medical student and the founder of the Teach Me series, which is a collection of medical e-resources aimed at medical students and junior doctors. Hi, my name is Zach, I'm not many of you here today. Um, I'm a GP and uh, an aesthetic doctor, keeping a lead on aesthetics, and I run Dome Medical, which is a training company that trains doctors in aesthetics according to the new guidelines and helps you find work in the industry. Okay, thank you very much. So, oh, sorry, quickly take a photo of everyone. sensitivity and consideration towards low-income countries, innovative way of generating revenue, facilitating free education for all, and exceptional achievement with the project given his background and experience. This future doctor has bags of potential and I would back him 100%. So well done. <laughs> The next category, can we have um, Dr. Ode Ode to the <coughs> stage? Um, so he'll tell us more about why he's up here before we announce the next category. Hi, 
first off, a uh, big congratulations to Avina for pulling a wonderful two days. So a round of applause for her, please. <laughs> An amazing event over the past few days, and I'm sure you guys are exhausted from the amount of information and overload. overload. Um, congratulations on thinking of your next step in the future. Uh, my name is Odi, I'm an orthopedic registrar. Um, I've set up my own business in the aesthetics uh, arena. I've also completed an MBA. And now I'm heading up a startup competition as part of the giant healthcare event, which we're running on November 16th coming up. Uh, so I wanted to invite all of you guys to get onto our website, which is uh, Giant Health. Uh, event.com you'll see there that there's a uh, there's a program with some phenomenal expertise coming in to chat both in the UK and from the US and as far as India they're going to be talking about various things including entry into the Indian market entry into economically disadvantaged markets as well as uh, workshops that we're going to be holding for entrepreneurs on what business skills they need strategy um, talking to lawyers. I specifically want to talk about the Beanstalks competition. Uh, we've got some phenomenal prizes coming up uh, for that, including um, cash prizes, as well as um, mentoring, uh, access to uh, different clinical markets. Um, so that's what we're going to be offering. And as a final point to the winners in the health tech uh, startup competition for today, we're going to be offering them a free uh, exhibitor stand, which I don't think anyone was aware of until just now. So a round of applause for who the winner will be shortly. And I'd like to add to that that the runners up will get free tickets to our event as well. What the hell? For all you guys, we'll give you a special discount uh, to attend. <laughs> the tickets are for, I'm feeling kind today. The tickets are, are Price that uh, 1,150. There's an early bird. We're going to give it to you guys for uh, 50 pounds. The code is ACW16. So if you go to the website, put that in, you'll get a super discount to attend our event. Thanks. Thank you. So can we have the health tech entrepreneurs come up to the stage, please? The health tech companies. Yes, that is you. <laughs> Can you please all give us 10 second introductions? Starting with Barbara. <laughs> Founders of Map and Manage and Prescribe Emergency Medicine, a smartphone app that's free to download and use. It's got loads of great clinical guidance and important conference for other doctors. Hi, women don't quite have one of them in yet, but we're doing okay. So I'm Rasha, I'm one of the um, I'm North London GP. I'm a medical relations officer and one of the founding GPs for my health specialist, which you saw Carter already talk about, a platform for patients to find doctor recommended consultants on it. Hi, I'm Sheeta, also from my health specialist team. Um, Tika and Rachel already said a bit about that, so I won't speak more. I'm not actually a medic, but I'm a female entrepreneur, um, working with local communications. So, um, yeah. I'm, I'm actually began the founder and chief medical officer of GPDQ, the UK's first doctor on demand application. I'll say it again, uh, I'm representing not care. So let's take Just about. Yeah, it's 
So remind us a bit, what is the runner-up prize? So the runner-up prize is uh, free tickets to the Giant Health event where we're going to have tens of exhibitors that are bringing uh, some very innovative solutions to the healthcare space. It's a B2B and a B2C, uh, business to business and business to consumer event. Um, it's a platform where we're gonna be hoping to exchange ideas. Um, there's also gonna be some uh, very interesting speakers. John Nostra, uh, Scott Andrews, head of Samsung uh, for health. So a lot of big names that are gonna be at the event um, that you can also network with. One thing that you must, must do if you're looking to get into business is network. That is, and this is something that we as doctors are very weak on and we need to up our game on. And that's how you're gonna to get to influence and be a changing force both in the UK and globally. Okay, thank you very much. So the runner up. The runner up is myhealthspecialist.com. Well done. And for the winner, they're going to get a free exhibitor stand at the event. So uh, by all means, come over and show your support for. Mm. And you guys get quite a bargain. Thousand pounds, uh, one thousand one hundred pounds off. Correct. Amazing. <laughs> okay. The winner is Doctor Care Anywhere. <laughs>